What is going on YouTube? I'm working on another custom today. And today I'll be working on a 1969 Mercury Cyclone. This car was sent in by Nick Devers. He sent in quite a few cars that he think would be good additions to this set of vintage NASCARs that I'm making. So uh, he pointed out that I had left out Ford and sent in a few Fords and Mercury's and Buick's. Cyclones were pretty competitive back in NASCAR in the day, so should be a good should be a good build. I need to drill out the posts, and I've had quite a few comments on how to drill these out, so I'm actually going to show you how I do it, and we'll go from there. So to drill out the post, the first drill bit I'm using is a 964th, and you just want to get that ring out. So I always check, make sure I'm going center before I keep continuing. I go really slow and kind of find the slower you go, the better your chances are. And that's what you're looking for right there is to pull that ring off. And if you get lucky and you drill them out right, this just pops right off. Just like that. So I was a little off on this one, as you can see, but we can fix it up pretty easily. Now, once that's drilled out, I use a smaller drill bit, and this will be the hole for the screw. Sometimes I use a punch, but I don't think it's gonna be needed on this one. that's good enough for that one and now for the next one and just like that all drilled out all right got everything taken apart and everything looks pretty good I would like to do a wheel swap on this, but these wheels are so narrow, it's probably going to be hard to find another car to pull the wheels off of, but I'll take a look and see what I got. The glass is in okay shape, but I'll probably end up going over it with some wax and try and get out some of those scratches if I can. And the body obviously looks pretty good. This is a little older casting, but I'm still going to go over it with some sandpaper to scuff up that clear coat to help the citrus strip out a little bit. And I'm just doing a real quick light scuff with a very aggressive sandpaper. I think this is 320 or something like that. So just enough to let the citrus strip penetrate through the clear coat and get in there and hopefully lift it off of there fairly quick. That's probably good enough for what I need. Now it's time to get the citrus strip on there. I'm just using a brush to put the citrus strip on there. It's always a good idea when you're using any type of paint stripper to wear gloves. And some of this stuff is actually pretty potent and obviously corrosive so you don't want that getting in your lungs so it would probably be a good idea to wear a respirator although I don't wear one with this if I was using some of the other paint strippers I've seen out there I definitely would because I like breathing and I like having lungs at work so all the more reason to take care of yourself just like that, real thin coat, and time to just let it sit and let the citrus strip do its job. All right, looks like the citrus strip did a number on this galaxy, and it is time to get that paint off there. 
citrus strip did a really good job. I've noticed on some of these older castings, and I'm not exactly sure what year this casting's from, uh, the citrus strip does a really, really good job of getting that paint out there. I mean, look at this. It almost got it all off the entire car. Even little nooks and crannies. So you can't beat that. That's what it's for. So... Very cool. Very happy with that. Citrus strip worked fantastic. Always think it's amazing when you get the paint off these cars to see exactly how much detail is in there. Like windshield wipers. Didn't really see that with the paint on there. But once you get the paint off, you can actually see quite a bit of details. Okay, I think that's in pretty good shape. Time to go wash it with some warm soapy water, go over it with a little bit of steel wool, and it'll be time to get some primer on this thing. So after a little soap and water and going over it with some steel wool, all the paint is off of there, and it is ready for some primer. I sprayed the car with some Krylon white primer, and then I went over it with some Krylon Cover Max Satin Bright White. And I was really happy with the way it turned out. I'm going with a little bit different paint scheme for this one. I thought it was a pretty cool decal set. And uh, definitely one that a whole lot of people will not know about. Unless you're a true diehard racing fan. I guarantee you, you probably haven't seen this one on the track for a while. This paint scheme is based off of a 2015 Ford Fusion that was driven by Cole Witt. Who the heck is Cole Witt? Well, apparently, he made his way through kart racing and then moved up to sprint cars and became a developmental driver for Team Red Bull. Witt made his NASCAR debut in 2010, and he last competed part-time in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series, driving the number 72 Chevy Camaro for TriStar Motorsports. He's got an awesome nickname, though. He's got red hair, and they nicknamed him the Ginger Lion due to his ferocity behind the wheel. How about that? That's actually a pretty cool nickname. So, although his NASCAR career wasn't uh, that ferocious, he ended up uh, retiring in November of 2018. Well, that's pretty much all I have on Mr. Witt. But what about this Mercury Cyclone? I'm sure when people are standing around and they're discussing cars and Mercury comes up, it's not the Cyclone they're talking about. I'll guarantee that it's the Mercury Cougar. Mercury's version of the Mustang was a very popular brand and quite honestly overshadowed the Cyclone quite a bit. But don't let that fool you. The Cyclone was an awesome muscle car and dominated NASCAR in the late 60s and early 70s. Mercury produced the Cyclone from 1964 to 1971 and this 1969 Cyclone was part of the third generation, which was from 1968 to 1969. Although it was outsold by other cars of the era, it could definitely hold its own on the track. Alright, it is now time for the best part of the build. Putting it all back together and seeing how it all turned out. So I didn't do anything to the base, just left it alone. I think the chrome's going to look fine with the... Uh, the paint scheme I got going on and everything. Uh, I think the black interior will be fine. I was able, if you can see it, to put the driver's name on there. Even though it's a Mercury, it still has the Ford signs, which Mercury is a division of Ford, so I didn't think it was too far off the mark. Let's get this back together. And see how this all turned out. I want to thank Nick Devers. He sent this car in a while ago with a few others. And uh, he originally wanted the... Uh, I have some Hooters decals. He originally wanted to make this Mercury a Hooters car. Which, who could blame him? But the Hooters decals are actually for an 80s Firebird and are kind of specifically designed for that. So I wasn't able to make it work for this. But I think the paint scheme that I have now is actually better than what the Hooters would have been. 
and we just want those snug enough to hold everything together they don't need to be super tight now time for the moment of truth let's see how this all turned out oh <laughs> yeah holy cow i really like the way this turned out looks like a bucket of chicken going on there at least half of it anyway kfc kentucky fried chicken really happy with the way this turned out kind of a different uh, set of decals it says kfc on this side and kentucky fried chicken on that side that's the way the actual car had it i wish they would have gone kentucky fried chicken on both sides but it is what it is can't do much about that but holy cow this thing looks pretty sweet i'm really happy with the way this turned out very cool so in 1969 you could get the cyclone with a couple different engine options you get a 302 with 220 horsepower you get two different versions of the 351 one with 250 horsepower and the other with 290 and you get the 390 which went into the gts and came with 320 horsepower so Mercury, wanting to compete in NASCAR, took the Cyclone and created the Mercury Cyclone Spoiler 2. But at the time, NASCAR mandated that 500 of each car be manufactured before it could qualify to race in NASCAR. So they came up with the Kale Yarbrough Special, a white car with red interior and exterior trim, and the Dan Gurney Special, which was a white car with blue interior and blue trim. According to some rumors, Mercury only built 351 Mercury Cyclone Spoiler 2s out of the reported 503 units. So as the story goes, Mercury built 351 extended D-nosed cars, which were the ones that were going to be used to race in NASCAR, and they parked them in the front and on the edges of the parking lot. They took 152 regular W-nosed Cyclone Spoilers, and parked them in the middle of all the spoiler twos in the parking lot. When NASCAR came to count all the cars, they didn't pay much attention to the cars parked in the back, which were the W-nosed cars, and they counted 503 units, which met the requirements for Mercury to race the Cyclone in NASCAR. I didn't have enough time to get into the rich history that is the Mercury Cyclone, but there's a pretty cool website out there. It's the Talladega Spoiler Registry which has a bunch of information about the old Ford Talladegas, the Mercury Cyclone spoilers, and just all kinds of cool information regarding these cars. So go check it out. So there it is. I'm really happy with the way this car turned out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I will see you on the next one.